bad that they have to lose their job, but it happens within the economy. When it does, though, we have rules for bankruptcy. In our country, for a hundred years, we've had rules for bankruptcy, and there are people who are preferred shareholders, there are people who wait second in line, and then there are people who own stock or workers, and they're last in line. That's just the rules. What we've done now is President Obama and the administration have come in and said, the rules are out. We now live under President Obama's rules, and his rules say the preferred bond shareholders, and they, they try to describe them and vilify them as these evil rich people, but you know who they were? It was the teacher's pension of Indiana. The teacher's pension of Indiana held Chrysler stock, and they were promised that they would be first in line, and that's why they made it. It was a pension fund, and they wanted to be conservative with their investment. They made an investment in Chrysler, but they knew they'd be first in line. Well, President Obama just changed the rules and, and, and says, no, you're last in line now, and you get less than the FAL-CIO gets. It's arbitrary law, and it's very dangerous. Not only dangerous and unfair to the people who made that investment, but here's the real danger. Capitalism and our economy and everything thrives on investment. If you tell pension funds that they're going to be first in line and then they're not, what happens the next time a pension fund, the Indiana Teachers Fund, wants to invest in another company? Maybe they don't. It creates uncertainty. We live by rules and we live by the laws because it creates certainty. Not only is it the right thing to do, but people in their economic planning want to know what the rules are. The rule of law is like having stop signs for traffic. We have this rule of law for contracts and we're supposed to obey it. We do it at our own peril. We must do something to take back our country. I think you realize this or you wouldn't be out here today. You have to take your country back. The only way you can take your country back is by being involved. You have to be involved. You have to do something about your government before it's too late. I was telling somebody earlier, and I truly believe this, I think we were in the middle of a long decline. I see us as the Roman Empire, 150, 200 AD, in the last vestiges of a great empire and going down. I think our country was a great country. And I think what's important about our country being great, you go to a lot of patriotic speeches on the 4th of July and America is great. Well, they are, but we're only great if you understand why we're great. It's not that we're better because of the color of the skin or because of our location on this continent or somehow America's better than other countries. We were better and we were great because of the ideas of our founding fathers and because we were the freedom experiment. We were the experiment in constitutional government and we're losing that. But that's why we're great. We're not, we're not just somehow innately better than other people. It's the ideas that made us great. Out of freedom sprang capitalism. Capitalism is the economic system of freedom. When we won the Cold War, we didn't do it with bullets and tanks. We won the Cold War because of the engine of capitalism being greater than the engine of socialism. The other thing about capitalism is we can't let them vilify us and just say we're a bunch of rich people just want to keep our money. Capitalism is the most humanitarian economic system the world has ever known. When Katrina happened, the government sent a lot of money down there and most of it was wasted. But you know that private individuals sent more money than the government? And I always ask people, they say, well, how can you be against sending, you know, government money to help those poor people after Katrina? I, I always say, if you had a choice, if you had a hundred dollars to give, who would you give it to? The Salvation Army or FEMA? FEMA is so incompetent, they couldn't distribute water at the Superdome. But I know a guy from my Lions Club who went down there and did a soup kitchen and fed people with the Salvation Army. And I'd give him ten times what I'd give the government. I would want to take away what I'd give to the government to give to the Salvation Army because they do such a great job. We've lost our confidence as a country. We can no longer defend capitalism. We can't defend freedom. We can't defend charity. Charity is despoiled when the government does it. Charity comes from the heart and from individuals. And when the government gives it to someone, that's no longer charity. That's just redistribution of goods. And they don't do it very well. Charities do work. We can take care of people, and we need to believe it. And if we have to have the government involved, let's have it at a much more local level. Once you send it to Washington, it's wasted and corrupted. But we get there by following the rule of law, by following the Constitution. And what we have to do as a people and as a country is rally together and we need to send a lot of people home, but we also need to get involved and somehow figure what is the practical application for you and I to try to change things for the better. And I truly think it's not an academic question 
It's not a parlor question anymore. It is something that is very important that will be coming within the next few years. And if we do nothing about it, we will slowly see our freedom slipping away. And my message to you today is get out there, do what you can to take your country back. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Paul. We have a presentation um, we'd like to make to him.